Hey guys, so I recently did a video on a really interesting tool called RecUtils, and it's basically a general purpose database that is meant to be used from the command line. It has an interesting C interface, and it mostly is meant to work with plain text files. And so because of that, you get nice readability, and it has a lot of extra features like special expressions that allow you to find um, specific kinds of data using regular expressions or whatever you feel like. They're very powerful. It also has joins, what you would expect to see in relational databases like SQL, if you guys are comfortable with that sort of stuff. Um, it has syntax checking that is built into it using a separate tool, um, fairly powerful templates, and a type system, which can be really awesome. But it has some limitations, and its biggest limitation is performance. Due to the way that it works, it basically has to function similar to how grep works, where it has to go from the file look through the stream, or the entire file basically, until it finds something that matches your expression, and then it gives you that. And so because of that, you run into performance issues in larger databases. And luckily, there is a solution to this, and that solution is known as Plan9's NDB, or in other words, Network Database. Now originally, NDB is actually mentioned to function as a part of Plan9's uh, network system, kind of as an alternative to something like a host file that you see on most Unix systems, but because of the way that NDB actually works, it can function as a more general purpose uh, database that we can all use for different purposes, and it's not really restricted to that one use case. Now, if you guys are interested in other tools like NDB, if you're interested in Plan9, if you're interested in Unix tools, then make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you guys will be notified of my next video, and like this one so I know that you guys are interested in things like this. Now, at its core, NDB is really just a way to group together key value pairs and through that, you guys can actually find information on each of the different data attributes. So let's go ahead and show you guys a really quick example so you guys know what I'm talking about. So just to give you guys a really simple example, I'll show you something that I've set up ahead of time for you guys to kind of see the general syntax. So I set this up ahead of time. The general layout is that you have a key and then a value. And so if your value has a space in it, then you have to put it in quotes. If not, it can just be set right there. You use an equal to say that that value goes with that key. And then you basically keep everything together by using either white space, so tabs, or you can even use um, spaces. So this is the equivalent. You don't actually need to use tabs specifically. Um, and so another thing that's really useful is that you can actually put them in line. So instead of having tabs, I could actually put this all in one line, and this would function the exact same. Um, it would actually couple them closer together. So say if I had something that was uh, very similar, then when I was querying for it, it would pull up the one that had everything on the same line or the values on the same line before the other options. Another thing that you guys probably are noticing is the fact that you can actually put comments um, just by using a octothorpe or a hashtag or a pound or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can add comments, which is very convenient. In fact, you don't even need this white space either because the indentation actually does that for you. So you don't need the white space, but I find it a bit more readable. And since part of the reason that I'm using these plain text databases is for readability, I think it makes more sense to give the extra white space. So now that you guys have seen the general file format, let's show you how to query it. It's actually pretty simple. The way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna do ndb query, and then you're gonna give it the file that you want it to query, so our database, and then we're gonna give it an attribute and what value it should have. So we're looking for ones with the attribute gender and with the value of male. So here you'll see that it prints out two. You'll see that it prints out Gavin and Kim, who both have the attribute male. Now you can also go name, and it will actually print out the first entry's um, value for the attribute name. And so in the manual, this calls it the uh, R attribute, so return attribute, um, and it will just give us the first entry, which may not be that intuitive, but once you guys have seen it a couple of times, it makes it a bit easier to remember. So I'm sure some of you guys are wondering, where is this speed improvement that you've been talking about? I haven't really seen anything that's showing it off. And so I figured I might as well go ahead and do that. So it's really simple how you guys actually can see it. I'm just gonna use time. And I've set these up ahead of time. So I'm going to basically use time to give us the information. And then I'm using NDB query, like we were using a second ago, on a file, on a database called Chem, um, which basically has all of uh, the periodic table in there. And then we're finding the 118th uh, atomic number. So that should give us all the information on that. So when I run it, we will see that 
it really couldn't measure how fast it was to get the information. But here's basically the information on the element with the atomic number 18. And so now if we do the same thing with uh, Rexel, um, we'll just use an expression to give it this information. And then we will give it the exact same uh, table just in a rec format. They're practically identical. And there we go, we'll see that we actually did get slower performance. Now while this may seem like a very big nitpick, obviously the periodic table is very small compared to a database of thousands and thousands of pieces of information. So this is kind of where you'd start to run into a performance penalty. Now as your database starts to grow, you're probably gonna to wanna to split it up into files. And so to do that, it's probably the easiest to make one file that contains all your databases included. So the way that you can do that is you're just gonna do a file, and I made one ahead of time called tote.db. And so basically the way that you do this is you make the attribute database, and then each file contains the next file in your database, and you can just give it the absolute path to your databases, and then these will all be included together. So now if we do a query, and instead of doing this, we actually did uh, tote.db, we would see, oh, it's able to find the entry with the name Brady from this, and that is actually included in one of the files. So there we go, there's our entry Brady, and it's inside of one of our files, and we can even query the same stuff that we had before. So finding the one with the name Gavin Freeborn, and there we go, we can get that information. So pretty easy and pretty simple in order to expand your database as it grows and grows and grows. Now on the topic of databases growing, as it grows you run into performance limitations, as I'm sure you guys remember me mentioning earlier, with RecUtils. Now this can be resolved pretty simply just by doing this other command called ndbmkhash. And so this will create a hash and we're going to give it our file, so that would be tote db, and we're hashing it for the word, for the attribute name. All right. And so now, when we do our query, it will actually be faster. Now, I probably should have uh, actually benchmarked this before, but I'm sure you guys can imagine that this will be a lot faster because it basically removes the need to go through each of the vials and parse them. Instead, it can actually just use um, the hash to basically be like, oh, here's where it should be, and then jump to that location in the file, grab the information, give it to you. Pretty simple and pretty powerful, especially since uh, this is one of the biggest limitations that you run into with RecUtils. So after working with both RecUtils and NDB for a while now, the biggest thing that I miss is doing multi-line entries instead of having to do one really long one-line entry, but that's pretty easy to give up due to the speed improvements and the simplicity of the program. And the biggest thing with this simplicity is that you have to worry less about things breaking. There's been a lot of development recently on RecUtils, but it still isn't perfect and nobody's perfect, bugs will exist. So the less code, the less functionality, the more stable it will be. So the trade-off is there. You get more functionality with RecUtils, but instead you lose out on the possible stability. Now, that's not really to say anything about the code base. There's been a lot of work on it, so I can't say anything about that, versus NDB has been around for a while, hasn't broken, and it's so simple, I can't imagine it breaking anytime soon. So in conclusion, I could definitely see myself using NDB again in the future, especially for more uh, performance-oriented stuff where I would need much quicker turnaround, especially when it comes to much more simple structures. Uh, that said, RecUtils still beats it out in a lot of the simplicity when it comes to querying it, since you can use regular expressions, you can use parts of an attribute instead of having to do the whole thing, you can use a lot of stuff to make it a bit quicker, that said, if you're just integrating into a program, they're pretty interchangeable. They both have very good C libraries if you guys want to look at that. Let me know if you guys are interested in that sort of stuff and I can do a video on it if you guys are. And on top of that, the biggest thing is that you get a lot more uh, functionality with using Unix tools like awk and sed and other tools. Uh, I find NDB is a bit more um, inclined to work with that versus RecUtils kind of relies a bit too much on itself so you can't quite parse it as easily since things can mess around a lot and you don't really have as much control unless you're using the RecUtils programs. Now on top of that, something that I should probably also mention is that I know a lot of the fan base or people that watch my videos are really into um, minimal tools. I hate saying the word suckless because it's almost become cliche now. 
but suck list tools, simple tools, and I feel like that's where NDB really shines is in the idea of minimalism um, in your programs. NDB really comes through in that case. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it interesting. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this program in the comments. Let me know how you think it compares to RecUtils. Let me know what you think about the general uh, setting that it uses. Let me know what you think about Plan 9. Tell me all about what you guys think. I'm very interested. Also, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you guys will be notified of my next video. Thumbs up so I know that you guys enjoyed it. And see you next time.